Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's DIY video, we are making this gorgeous Dollar Tree shabby chic decor planter using a Dollar Tree plastic flower pot, some paint, and air dry clay. It is an easy and quick shabby chic French country DIY, perfect as a spring gift for any shabby chic lover and a unique piece of gorgeous home decor. And you're going to love it. So stick around and let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I got this plastic flower pot from Dollar Tree and I removed the label from the bottom. I'm using my Waverly White chalk paint and I know that it can be hard to find the Waverly chalk paint now, but really any brand chalk paint will work for this. I will link one in the description box below for you if you can't get your hands on the Waverly. I painted the entire pot starting on the inside and making my way out to the outside of the pot. I ended up doing two to three coats on the outside to really cover up that clay color. And I wasn't worried about covering up the inside of the pot since you really won't be seeing that at all. I bought this large set of flower molds on Amazon. I will link them for you below. And I had some DAS, that's D-A-S, air dry clay left over from a previous project, but I will link that for you below as well. I always use a vacuum sealer and a vacuum bag to store my leftover air dry clay. Um, I find that my clay never dries up no matter how long I store it. So that's a little clay crafting storage advice from me to you. Vacuum sealers are great for storing clay. I bought mine to use for sous vide food, but I find that it's so useful for crafting as well. Anyway. If you are not familiar with using this clay, it's really so easy. Um, you knead it for a little bit to soften it and warm it up. I like to use a paintbrush to brush a little bit of cornstarch onto the molds, and then I shake the excess out, and then just push the clay into the molds. I mean, you're getting into all those little nooks and crannies, and then I use my fingers or a spatula or a scraper to scrape the excess clay off of the top so that when you remove the clay, the underside will be more flat and it's easier to glue down onto your surface that way. To remove the clay from the molds, I find it easiest to peel the mold up and back from the clay gently peeling the mold back instead of just trying to peel the clay out of the mold that makes it easier to keep your flowers intact if that makes any sense but if you do break a flower it is easy enough to just mush it all up and start the mold all over again clay is very forgiving I had some small flower molds that were already in my stash, but I will link those for you below as well. They come in a set of multiple flowers and shapes and sizes, and I've used them to make embellishments for all kinds of projects. So I think they're a really good value. I make multiple flowers before I start gluing them down because the clay takes at least 12 to 24 hours to really harden. So you have plenty of time to make all your molds without them drying up on you. It's a large flower pot, so I needed lots of flowers, although I wasn't sure at that point just how much of the pot I was going to cover. I just kept making more and more flowers in assorted sizes as I saw fit, and I figured I'd make them all fit together on the uh, pot when I started the gluing process, so I just kind of winged it at that point. I'm using some tacky glue I got at Dollar Tree, and I begin with gluing the larger flowers down first, and then add some medium and smaller ones around it. And at the beginning, I thought I'd follow a pattern of flowers wrapping around the pot, but as I went around the pot, I started to fill in more and more empty spaces with the flowers, and ultimately, I just decided to cover the entire pot with flowers in a random pattern. I wanted to make sure I was covering the lip at the top of the pot also, because I thought it looked better covered up with clay than to be able to see it. And I just made more and more clay flowers as I was gluing them down. And just to fill in some of the empty spots that were on the pot and going over the lip of the pot, I did use some leaf uh, molds that I had. I will link them below just for a change of pace. And the leaves really fit in very nicely with the flowers that I already had. 
I did end up making quite a few clay molds to fit all around this pot. And if you were to use a smaller Dollar Tree flower pot, you'd obviously need less flowers and therefore you'd use less clay. But I ended up um, using all the clay that I had left from that other project that I had. And that was fine as far as I was concerned because I really did like the look of the pot being totally filled with the flowers and also some leaves. I always forgot just how much I love working with clay and using these molds. The molds make it really easy to make embellishments that look so professional and they end up giving whatever you're making a really, really high-end look. Clay is just really a low-cost but highly effective way of doing that. I definitely want to make more projects using clay and using molds and I'd be really curious what kinds of DIYs using them that you guys would be interested in seeing. So let me know in the comments what kind of clay projects you'd like to see me do in the future. I would love to know what you guys would like to see. Also, just a note, when gluing these clay embellishments to anything, especially if the item you are gluing them onto is a smooth surface, the clay does tend to slide down before the glue is dry because clay is fairly heavy. And I find that sometimes it's easier, like in this case, to glue your clay in sections and to lay whatever you're gluing it onto flat or as flat as possible and then waiting a few hours for the glue to set in between before moving on to another section. There were flowers on this piece that started to slide down on the pot while I was gluing, so I did have to go back a few times and in a few places and slide my flowers back up the wall of the pot. Also because of this, I think it's easier for you if you just start gluing your embellishments at the bottom or the lower part of your project and then slowly working and gluing your way upward so that if things start to slide down, they really won't have any place to go. And hopefully that doesn't sound confusing because it's not. It's just sort of a common sense gravity thing. So make it easier on yourself and just glue the clay in sections and wait for the clay to dry in between. Because I ended up covering the whole pot with flowers, which meant that I had to keep making more and more clay flowers, I was actually able to leave some drying time on my sections, like in between on the sections of the pot because I needed that time to make more flowers. So that worked out fine in the end. I simply kept making clay flowers and gluing clay flowers until I felt that I had covered all the areas of the pot, the bare pot that were left. I couldn't possibly tell you how many flowers and leaves all together that I made. And depending on what pot and what mold you're using, that number would change anyway, but it was a lot. And after I finished the gluing, I waited a full 24 hours or overnight for the clay to get completely dry. This particular clay, it dries pretty white in color, but despite that, off camera, once it was dry, I did a full coat of white chalk paint over all of the flowers and I waited a little while for that to dry as well. Once my clay and paint were dry I had a white ceramic candle holder also from the Dollar Tree. I love these candle holders. I use them to give some height to just about anything. They're very versatile. I always buy a bunch of them whenever my Dollar Tree has them in stock. I grabbed my Waverly Antique Wax and a dry rough bristled brush and I proceeded to dry brush very lightly the antique wax onto the peaks and the edges of my flowers. I wanted to start out super light with the color so I put the wax onto the brush and then wiped a bunch of it off onto the paper plate or paper towel. You can always add more paint, but it is harder to take it off. So you definitely wanna do this in layers to better control how much color you apply. 
You can also try wiping off any areas that you feel are getting too dark with a baby wipe. I also used a dry, small little brush to brush the wax into the outlines of the flowers to emphasize their edges and into their shapes. I was trying to get an antiqued, distressed kind of look to my flowers, as though they had been sitting outside exposed to the elements for years and years. That's the look that I was going for. I did the same dry brush technique to the candle holder, and then off camera, I used a couple of dabs of hot glue to attach the candle holder to the bottom of the flower pot. And this is how my Dollar Tree shabby chic decor French country spring planter turned out. I filled this planter with several bunches of pink roses from Dollar Tree and I love it. I think it's so soft and sweet looking and it totally has that antique shabby chic feel to it. I think you could change the look up with a faux plant or some other kind of greenery to make it a little English garden feeling, but I really love it with a bunch of spring-like pink or other pastel florals. I think it's truly French country shabby chic and a little bit of spring sprinkled on top. This was so easy and fun, if you like working with clay, which I obviously do. I think this is a great project to give as a gift for a mom or a teacher or anyone really that loves that vintage style. It's also absolutely perfect to push your home into spring with a shabby chic decor. It was made using a Dollar Tree plastic flower pot for $1.25. How great is that? But I want to know what you guys think. Do you love this shabby chic planter? What would you put in it? A plant or other greenery or colorful flowers? Would you give this as a gift? Or would you keep it as a burst of spring for your home decor? I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY. And if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.